What's going on, y'all? Jason back with another episode of Vikings Daily Sit Rep, and uh, here to talk about the Vikings GM search and uh, and hiring. Uh, obviously, that's the big thing dominating the news around the Vikings right now. The Vikings have finally got into some interviews with head coaching candidates, with GM candidates, and uh, we've done a couple episodes already talking about some of the people that the Vikings may be considering. And uh, one comment in particular from a, from a, a viewer really got me thinking about this, um, about what we should be looking for and what we as fans should be thinking about when we consider these candidates. It is time for Climbing the Pockets, Vikings Daily Sit Rep. The, the viewer rightly pointed out that, you know, we are very quick to get excited about historic firsts. Um, the Wilfs called out that they're looking to to target diversity in, in this slate. And the Vikings, as we've seen, have casted a very wide net in terms of the type of candidates that they've interviewed, the level of experience that these candidates um, have in their career, the type of roles that they've had. And they've gone out to qualified candidates from all sorts of levels of the organization to tap the next person for the Vikings GM search. And so um, they've been given a lot of praise. They've been lauded in the media. A lot of the Vikings fan base is very excited about the fact that the Vikings are casting a wide net and bringing in a lot of people for interviews. And so I'll go ahead and get it out of the way and say that I also am very excited about the fact that the Vikings are casting a wide net, that they're bringing in a lot of people, that they're choosing to have as many conversations with smart football people as they can before they make this very important hire for the franchise. Um, as someone who in their day job does a fair share of hiring, I, I do quite a bit of studying on like how you should be approaching something, how you should be studying. And I think sometimes as fans, what we end up doing or what we do ourselves a disservice in doing is that we very much get ourselves caught up in, in something that we hate when coaches do. So we, we will rag on coaches for maybe making the overly safe decision to lose more slowly by maybe not going for it on fourth down or not kicking the two or not going for it for two when it'll give you a better chance to win. And the same kind of thing can happen in these hiring decisions. And we see it in the NFL from year to year. We get very caught up in the idea of experience and that we need to have someone with a certain sort of experience. We need to have someone whose experience very easily can be ported from what they've done into the new role. And that feels rational. It feels like it makes sense. It feels safe. It feels like something that like we should be doing. Obviously, if I want someone to do this role, it's easy for me to see them doing that same thing someplace else, pick that experience up, put it into this role, and everything should be good. And that's typically how a lot of hiring is done. We see it around the NFL. We see it year over year over year where the same sort of person is given opportunities. They maybe wash out of the league, take a couple years off, come back, rinse, repeat. And you see a lot of retreads coming through the NFL over and over and over and over and over again. And you see that in business, you see that all over the place. Um, and the reason for that is that it's a very old school way of thinking. It's, you know, we all do our resumes and you write that out, you write the things that you've done. And so a lot of hiring has typically been done on like, what have you done? Okay, great. You've done this. I can hire you for this. But what we're starting to learn now, the more that we study hiring, we, the more that we study successful companies, the ones that do the best aren't hiring based on your experience. And so I'm going to say that again because it doesn't sound like it makes sense, but the ones that do the best in the long run, the top performing co um, companies, they aren't hiring based on your experience. The top companies are hiring based on your potential. So they're looking to see, do you have the requisite skill set required for this role? And that ultimately should be what an interview is about what the Vikings should be looking to uncover in these conversations is not, has this person done this before? Or have they been a GM before? Or is this a role they've had? Or any of those other things. Because titles don't actually tell you as much about a person's aptitude as we've been trained to think. The Vikings really should be having these conversations to understand, well, A, going in, the Vikings should understand very clearly what are the skill sets that we value 
in a general manager. And we've heard some of them from Mark Wilf. They're looking for people who can come in, who can collaborate, can set the tone, the organizational vision for the entire team, bring people together, create a culture, create cohesiveness, get people to work together. And then obviously they're looking for someone with football skills, football background, able to work and operate in this culture um, and bring people together around a vision that will get the Vikings closer to the ultimate goal, which is a Super Bowl. So, like, those are the things that you're looking for if you're the Vikings. The interview process now isn't about finding someone who's already done those things because that person doesn't exist. It's finding the person with the best combination of skills that you feel can come in and do the role and lead your organization forward. And so when you shift the paradigm away from I'm looking for someone whose experience looks like this to I'm looking for a person whose skills line up like this. It allows you to cast a wider net. It allows you to be the one who identifies the next big thing before the next big thing is the next big thing. And so while I will grant to you and you know GMs or, and, and owners around the league, it is a lot safer, or at least it feels safer to go with someone that you've absolutely seen do the thing before. What I will say is that what we're seeing in the business world, and and if you don't believe me, I, I ask all of you to Google better to hire for experience or potential, and you will find many an article from the Harvard Business Review, the many HR blogs kind of saying the same thing that I'm saying right now, is maybe it's time for us to open our minds in terms of what we're thinking about with these candidates, that while, yes, the safe hire might be someone that we can point to, like, oh, my God, they've done this exact thing or something very close to it, that might make us feel really good inside. But what we're really looking for is not someone, not for someone to do what they've already done. We're looking for someone to do something new and exciting and take our team to levels that they've never been before. And that might require a bit of bravery on the part of the Wilfs. And maybe might might require a leap of faith on behalf of us as fans, because to get us someplace we've never gone, we're not going to be able to do the things that we've always done. And it's going to require the Wills to do what it seems that they are doing right now, which is to cast a wide net, have a lot of conversations with a lot of smart people, stack up those people, understand the skill sets that those people bring to the table, and then put the person who best fits what they're looking for moving forward. And often what ends up happening when you cast that wider net is that people who may have historically been overlooked for roles of this sort start to bubble to the surface. So you may start to see some names of some women in there that historically you wouldn't have been seeing, not because they aren't good, just because they haven't been given the opportunity. When you cast that wider net and you start to have those broader conversations, you may start to see some names of some minority candidates that you might not ordinarily see. Not because those folks aren't good. Actually, the statistics will tell you it's quite the opposite, that these candidates, that the women that come through tend to perform at a higher level because they have to, because they're in a male-dominated field. And so the people who do make it to those higher levels in the organizations who are female or who are black or in another minority group tend to perform at higher levels than their cohort because they've had to while operating in fields that are not dominated by folks who look like them. And so that is just another thing for us to consider as we're looking at this whole thing. It's as you cast that wider net and you look for the person whose skill sets match the role, they might not look like what we expect. And that doesn't mean that they are more likely to fail Statistically, it actually means they're less likely to fail. And so while instinct or whatever you might want to call it may lead someone to want to prejudge these candidates based on what you can see on a resume, I say let's give the Vikings ownership uh, the benefit of the doubt on this one. Because from what I can tell and the way they're approaching this hiring, they're going about it the right way. They're not going in with preconceived notions. They're casting a wide net. They're having a lot of smart conversations. And ideally, at the end of this, we will have a great candidate who can help drive this team to where we all want it, which is a Super Bowl. So that's it. That's all. That's my rant for the day. If you do hiring at your job, don't just look at the resume. Have smart conversations with the people you're looking to hire and hire for what they can do, not what they have done. That's it. That's all. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, hit the button, all that good stuff. We love having y'all around. We love chopping it up with our community. 
And uh, like this rant was inspired by one of y'all. So uh, yeah, give us more material. We love it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you're listening on your favorite aggregator, make sure you rate us. And always feel free to join the conversation here at Climb in the Pocket. Skull, everybody.